Here at Common Sense Skeptic, we've been working away at our episode 12 in the Debunking Starship series. But with the media going nuts about Musk badmouthing the FAA about the scrubbed SN9 launch, we thought we would take a quick break and share the truth about the Boca Chica facility, which may have something to do with this squabble, amongst other things. First off, where exactly is Boca Chica? Boca Chica, originally called Kennedy Shores, now on the map as Copernic Shores, is right on the Texas-Mexico border at the extreme east. The Rio Grande to the south, separating the U.S. from Mexico, is less than 5 kilometers away. To the southeast of Boca Chica is protected wetlands called the Las Palomas Nature Preserve, and to the west is Boca Chica State Park. To the east is open access to the Atlantic Ocean, and those beaches are used by endangered sea turtles as nesting grounds. There's growing concern in the area about the environmental impact of SpaceX's present in this environmentally sensitive area, adding to the fact that in July of 2019, SpaceX's Starhopper caused 100 acres of nearby brush to catch fire. Before Musk came along, Boca Chica Village was a small resort town undergoing gentrification by people looking to retire on the beach in an affordable community. Property was cheap, giving many retirees the opportunity to enjoy a low-cost beachfront property, all of whom have now been forced out of their homes. Musk's heavy-handed tactics made residents fear that they had no choice but to give in to his demands, leaving their dream homes behind. Many people know who Boca Chica Maria is. This is her and her husband Ray describing those tactics. I don't want to have to be pushed out of a home that I've spent a lot of money putting together. The physical property anybody can put a price on, that's tangible. But the intangibles, like living here, the enjoying this ambiance, how do you put a price on that? How do you quantify that? The next step, no doubt, is, is the corporation that's been put in existence in 2013 for the public good is going to eminent domain us. In 2013, Musk and the state of Texas started talking about an agreement to establish a spaceport launch facility somewhere in Texas. After two years of hunting, Musk chose Boca Chica. As part of that selection process, the FAA in December of 2013 released an environmental assessment of the site and made recommendations that can be found on the FAA site itself. Consultation number, if you'd like to look it up, is 02 Echo Tango Charlie Charlie 00 2012 Foxtrot 0186. It is actually a little disturbing what the FAA considered to be acceptable environmental losses to facilitate this launch complex. In that recommendation, SpaceX had certain responsibilities with regards to the safekeeping of the area, most of which they have reportedly failed to live up to. As stated in the very title of this recommendation, this assessment was based upon launches of Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy vehicles, including unnamed reusable suborbital launch vehicles. Nowhere in this paper is the Starship mentioned, and not a single Dragon vehicle has ever been launched from Boca Chica. The Dallas News reported in August of 2014, the Texas legislature rewrote state law enabling SpaceX to conduct 12 launches per year between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday to Friday, not on weekends and not on holidays. Obviously, this is a state law that Musk has broken many times over. These changes in state law never allowed Musk to operate his own private test range in the area, nor conduct explosive testing, nor test prototype vehicles at all hours of the day and night, as he has done seemingly at will in recent years. Comparing the SpaceX vehicles side by side, there is no doubt that whatever assessment the FAA and state environmental panels came up with, it's null and void when considering what SpaceX is doing with Starship compared to what they told the FAA they would actually be doing on site. If SpaceX were flying Falcons from the site, one would expect to experience an RUD of the vehicle only in a worst case scenario. But SpaceX is constantly blowing up tanks and vehicles as part of their ridiculous rapid iteration program. And rather than enduring a 1 in 10 failure, SpaceX blows up the vast majority of what they build in Boca Chica. So it is entirely possible that the FAA is finally putting their foot down while they conduct public hearings and a renewed environmental assessment that they announced in November of 2020 based on concerns about SpaceX's recent activities. There is also possibly another more political aspect to this, thanks to the new Biden-Harris administration. Now the following are facts, this is not a political debate. Traditionally, the chairman of the NASA Advisory Board, the person who makes recommendations to Congress for NASA funding, is the Vice President of the United States. Up until a couple of weeks ago, that person was Republican Mike Pence, whose president created the United States Space Force. Take that for what it's worth. But it's fair to say that both of those men were pro-space exploration and vehicle development. Now the vice president is Democrat Kamala Harris, under Joe Biden. 
And the last time the Democrats were in power under Obama, the space shuttle program got shut down and NASA suffered for it. The Democrats have already stated publicly that their focus for NASA is going to be the study of climate change much more so than lunar exploration. Jim Bridenstine, who was appointed by Trump, gave up his position as NASA administrator the same day Biden and Harris took office. He basically left before they had a chance to fire him. Since taking control of both houses in Congress, Democrats have called for the general boycotting and harassment of Trump administration associates. Shortly after Trump took office in 2016, Musk joined Trump's economic advisory panel along with other actual leaders of industry. Although Musk didn't stick around for very long, he did recently tell his Twitter sphere to quote unquote, take the red pill during the last election cycle, indicating that he was pro-Republican and that might just cause him some trouble with an all Democrat administration. Mind you, after he told everyone to take the red pill, he also endorsed Kanye West, so there's that. These are all definitely things to ponder, as SN9 continues to set on the launch pad, even after completely fueling up yesterday in expectation of a last minute authorization from the FAA that didn't come. 30 plus hours later, we are still looking at Musk's latest giant fireworks sitting on the pad, waiting for it to go off, and now SN10 is also on deck. Now, it's possible the issues the FAA are concerned with have more to do with the fact that SN9 fell over in its high bay, causing some damage to her top fins. But this might just be where the FAA starts holding Musk accountable for his agreements and making him follow the rules. And one last thing about Boca Chica before we sign off, although it's a complete long shot. If it happens, it really could affect the launch site of Boca Chica. Lawmakers in Texas, fed up with federal government shenanigans, plan to introduce legislation calling for a referendum on succession of Texas from the United States. And while many would instantly dismiss such a thought, nobody thought Brexit would actually happen either. Thanks for tuning into this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic as we continue to keep our viewers informed with facts that the media tends to gloss over or not even cover at all. Time to get back to our next episode of Debunking Starship, which we hope to have out within a week. Give the channel a like, share it with your friends, and nail that subscribe button so that you'll know when the Common Sense Skeptic returns.